Okay, so I think we can uh, we can start. Uh, welcome to this uh, new week, uh, the workshop. So today we will have uh, two talks. Uh, the first one, the first speaker will be uh, Takuya Okuda from the University of Tokyo. And uh, he will tell us about the Toft line operators in N equal to supersymmetric gauge theories. Uh, just before we start, let me remind you that you are encouraged to ask questions. Uh, for the people here, just ask me for the microphone and wait that I give you the microphone to make the question. And uh, people online can just uh, unmute themselves uh, and uh, ask the question. So please, uh, Takuya. Okay, uh, thank you, Francesco. Yeah, so uh, I'm yeah, uh, Takuya Okuda from uh, Tokyo. Um, my original plan was to uh, visit GGI uh, physically, but uh, because of the uh, Delta variant of the coronavirus, I uh, had to uh, cancel my uh, physical visit. So uh, today, uh, I'll tell you about uh, two line operators in N equal to supersymmetric gate theories. Uh, the, this talk is based on the papers uh, listed here. Uh, so the two of the papers uh, uh, with uh, uh, Hirotaka Hayashi and Yutaka Yoshida, and another one uh, is with uh, uh, Yoshida. So I understand, I understand that the audience of this talk is uh, mixed, um, and the audience uh, uh, consists of condensed matter theorists and also high energy theorists. Well, I myself uh, I am myself a high energy theorist. And also the uh, theme of the workshop is the topological uh, properties of gauge theories. Uh, for these reasons, uh, I decided that uh, early in this talk, I will review the top some topological aspects of uh, line operators, uh, Wilson and two line operators. And uh, uh, I also uh, try to explain the basics of supersymmetric uh, or PPS uh, line op operators in uh, supersymmetric gauge theories. And as, as Francesco said, uh, please do not hesitate to ask questions if there is anything unclear. So, uh, this is the uh, plan of this talk. Uh, so I will begin uh, with the motivations for studying uh, line operators in uh, four dimensional N equals two gauge theories. Then I'm going to discuss uh, classifications of line operators in four dimensions. And this part will be a review. And in fact, I'm going to discuss uh, two classifications. Uh, one is the uh, rough topological classification of line operators. And uh, another classification is, another is the uh, classification of BPS and supersymmetric line operators. And the second classification is a uh, uh, more, more refined a final version of the uh, uh, okay, final classification than the topological classification. Okay, after, after this review part, uh, I will uh, move on to a uh, more quantitative aspect of, of my work. So supersymmetric localization, uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics and the brain construction of uh, line operator, or actually two to line operators. And I'm going to explain that um, uh, uh, the the supersymmetric supersymmetric quantum mechanics here um, exhibits some world crossing phenomena, and ex uh, also explain that uh, such world crossing is related to the choice of operator ordering, uh, the um, the ordering of uh, closed line operators. And I will finish my uh, talk uh, with a summary, conclusions, and the future directions. So let me begin with the motivations. Uh, Wilson and two to line operators are the uh, most uh, basic non local op operators that exist in uh, general four dimensional uh, gate theory. Here, uh, I'm, assu I'm assuming that uh, the space time dimension is, is four, and also that the gauge symmetry is uh, the usual, the, the ordinary uh, zero form symmetry. Yeah, and also I'm assuming that the gauge group is uh, continuous. Uh, we can relax uh, these conditions and, and if, uh, try to, uh, we can relax these conditions and still define uh, Wilson and two operators. But uh, in that case, uh, uh, Wilson and two operators may not be uh, line operators. They may be, okay, some, yeah, higher dimension, other dimensional op operators. Anyway, uh, Wilson and two line operators, uh, 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 they, they serve as the order parameters for the phases of gate theories as I, I, I'm going to review. 
And the, some properties of these line operators are topological. But with uh, n equals two supersymmetry, uh, very detailed, uh, exact quantita quantitative calculations uh, become possible for VPS line operators. And such calculations have many uh, non-trivial uh, physical and mathematical implications uh, because of various dualities. So these are uh, at least some of the motivations for studying line operators in n equals to uh, supersymmetric gauge series. Now uh, let me uh, uh, discuss the let me discuss first the uh, Wilson line or loop operator. So as everybody knows, the Wilson loop operator is defined as the uh, as the path order exponential of the gauge group along some uh, curve or contour gamma, and uh, we take the trace in some representation R of the uh, gauge group. The Wilson operator represents the world line of an infinitely heavy uh, electrically charged particle. And the Wilson loop serves as an order parameter for confinement. Uh, this can be understood uh, using uh, this picture. So here, uh, the contour gamma is taken to be a large rectangle in uh, Euclidean spacetime. Uh, so here uh, we have a quark and anti-quark. So quarks are confined uh, because uh, there, would be an, there would be an electric flux tube between a quark and an anti-quark when they are separated. And the electric flux tube uh, carries some uh, energy. Actually, uh, the, the tube has some tension, uh, non-zero tension. Uh, therefore, the potential between the quark and the anti-quark uh, is linear in distance, uh, capital L. Then the expectation value of the Wilson loop is, uh, is given by the exponential of minus, minus the uh, energy time, the Euclidean time, capital T. And okay, because okay, potential is proportional to the distance, um, yeah, uh, and, uh, the, the logarithm of the expectation value uh, is proportional to the, uh, the area enclosed by the uh, contour. Okay, I, I hope this is clear. Now, um, the, the claim is that the uh, reason lines can be uh, classified uh, in terms of uh, one sum, one form sy symmetry. So let's assume that the gauge theory uh, has gauge group G. Well, uh, yeah, so gauge group G. I think th th this can be uh, discrete. And also assume that uh, there, there is some matter field in the, in the uh, gauge theory. Now let us define uh, the following uh, discrete group. It's actually the subgroup of the center of the gauge group. Uh, gamma, uh, this, this, and this, call it gamma sub E. Now, gamma sub E is a um, group of uh, elements G of the uh, center uh, such that uh, G acts trivially on matter field. So there is some restriction on, on the group element. Then um, well, we can uh, try to define a codimension to uh, defects for each element of uh, gamma sub E. Um, what, what the defect does is to introduce some, uh, inter introduce a holonomy, okay, a little g, uh, for, for a circle that surrounds, that, that surrounds a, a, a defect. Now, because, because, uh, uh, this holonomy or, or the group element acts trivially on matter, um, this defect is top topological, so it, it can be moved around uh, without uh, changing the, the, the path integral, for example. Uh, well, as long as the uh, defect does not uh, touch other defects or operators or with, with some lines. And, and uh, such a defect, surface defect act on uh, with some lines because, okay, uh, the defect introduces uh, uh, holonomies. 
So, so the, what this means is that the Wilson lines are, are charged under uh, the one, one form symmetry, this electric uh, one form symmetry, well, which is also known as uh, a center symmetry. And uh, well, this is well known. And uh, in the case that the gauge group is SUN and uh, uh, there's no matter field, that the topological charge is the so-called NRT, which is the same as the number of boxes in the young, young tableau, uh, modulo N. So, sorry, what yeah. do you mean? What do you mean by defect? So yeah, okay, okay. But the defect is not okay. Uh, de defined precisely. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is code mention two. So um, uh, uh, the, the the transverse space is two dimensional. And and imagine that there is a defect at the origin. Then you can consider a loop that surrounds the, the origin. Uh, then this defect introduce, introduces the holonomy G. So that's the definition of the uh, defect. It, it's sometimes something called uh, okay surface of surface defect or Kukov uh, Witten defect. I might call it a vortex defect. And uh, uh, the claim is that if G acts trivial matter, then the defect is topological. And therefore, uh, generates uh, one form symmetry. So Am the, I clear? The, defect, defect is not the loop. Oh, the yeah, loop, right. The, the, loop, loop. the defect yeah, yeah. is around the loop. Defect is yeah, around the loop. Defect uh, links, links the loop. So, yeah, so, so the Wilson lines are the charged objects, charged operators, and the defects are the uh, symmetry generators. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me. Uh, okay. Go on. Then next, let me consider the two line operator. Uh, the the two operator is a world line of an infinitely heavy uh, magnetically charged particle. I mean the monopole. Um, this is slightly different from the original definition by two, but uh, uh, let me explain it. So again, uh, gamma is a, a loop or the contour. Oh, yeah, the contour in, in uh, Euclidean, well, in, in space time, in four dimensional space time. Then um, there are two transverse directions. No, no, uh, there are three transverse directions, code mention three. Yeah, uh, there are three transverse directions. So the transverse directions are like R3. Then we can consider a small uh, two sphere uh, that uh, links the, the loop, gamma. Then uh, on this S2, we, uh, then we can uh, impose a boundary condition on the gauge field such that on this two, sp on this two sphere, uh, we have a, a magnetic, uh, mon well, we have a mon monopole configuration. So, so the field strength is proportional to the volume form of the uh, two sphere uh, with a, with a uh, proportionality constant uh, given by the magnetic charge B. And with this boundary condition, we uh, perform some. Uh, we perform uh, the path integral. So this is uh, this is one definition of the uh, two -to operator. And the two -to operator uh, serves as an order parameter for gauge symmetry breaking, or the Higgs mechanism, or, or the superconductivity. And uh, the the story is very, uh, is uh, perfectly parallel with uh, uh, Wilson Wilson line. And the total line, uh, the total operator uh, 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 exhibits the area row uh, for, for Higgs mechanism in, in, the, in the phase with the Higgs, in the Higgs phase due to a magnetic flux two. Okay, is there any question on this? Okay, let me continue. Then uh, the. Uh, Again, uh, the two lines can be uh, topologically classified. Uh, first, uh, again, um, there is some there is some effect due to matter because uh, the, gauge, the the global form of the gauge group is rest restricted by matter. For example, uh, for SU two or SO three, if we have a doublet field in the 
uh, if you have a doublet as a matter field, then the global form, the global form of the gauge group has to be SU2, not SO3, right? And then the the uh, total is uh, topologically classified by uh, actually by by an by the by pi one, the fund, fundamental group of G, because uh, well monopole bundle uh, defined by the transition function. Uh, the, on, on the equator of the two sphere I mentioned. And, and uh, yeah, that gives you pi one. So, so pi, pi one of G uh, are the charges of the uh, total lines and therefore the, the charges of some one form symmetry. Then the, the group of the, the group for the uh, one form symmetry is uh, a Pontryagin dual, which I, uh, I, I denote by this V. Uh, and, and the Pontryagin dual is uh, defined by this home. Okay, is this clear? Okay, let me continue. Uh, the properties as all the parameters, uh, for example, the area versus a perimeter loss, uh, such properties depend only on the charges for the uh, one form symmetries. For Wilson lines, this is because uh, gluons and the matter fields can screen the electric charges. So, so I mentioned NRT, the number of boxes in the Young Tableau. Um, we, we can consider the different shapes of Young Tableau, but uh, as long as the number of boxes are the same, modulo n, then the uh, properties as order parameters are uh, the same. And similarly for two trines, uh, smooth Polyakov to hoofed monopoles can screen the magnetic charges. The, I mean, the magnetic charge B here, therefore, uh, yeah, uh, only only uh, only pi one of G matters. Mm -hmm. Now let me uh, now con consider uh, Wilson two line operators in four dimensional n equals two theories. Actually, BPS line operators. So the constructions of BP, the construction of Wilson and uh, two two lines can be uh, generalized by using uh, scalars, which are uh, super partners of the uh, gauge fields to define BPS line operators uh, in N equal to supersymmetric two gauge theories. And such line operators play significant roles, for example, in the uh, 42D, also now known as AGT correspondence. And in the AGT correspondence, uh, Wilson and two to line operators in four dimensional gauge theories map to the so-called Verlin lines or, or the topological, the, the, okay, the varying lines in two dimensional CFTs and the varying lines can also be identified with topological defect in two dimensional uh, level uh, conformal field theories. Okay, level or total uh, conformal field theories. Okay. Um, now uh, the, the expectation values of uh, of BPS line operators can be uh, computed, well, often comp can be computed exactly by the super something called supersymmetric localization. It's a technique uh, which uses supersymmetry. Um, and uh, well, I don't explain the details of this technique, but at the end of the at the, at the end of the day, uh, the expectation varies, well, especially uh, for two to lines, the expectation varies. Uh, given as uh, a sum of uh, the subtle points, uh, some uh, subtle point configurations. Sometimes uh, it, it, uh, it's an integral, but uh, well, in my case, in, in, in today's talk, uh, the expectation value is given as a sum of subtle points. And uh, uh, by uh, something called Kronheimer's correspondence between uh, monopoles and instantons, uh, supersymmetric localization calculations for total line operators uh, is in intimately connected, intimately related to uh, instanton counting. Now, let me uh, discuss the classification of BPS line operators. So, so the, the story is similar to topological classification, but uh, more refined. So, uh, BPS line operators emit uh, more refined classification than a topological or one-form symmetry classification. 
Uh, for example, BPS Wilson lines are classified by uh, representations. So, so here, the, the precise Young tableau for, for SUN uh, matters. And similarly, uh, for BPS, two to line operators are classified by the magnetic charge B for the Dirac singularity. Sorry, Takuya, can, can I ask you? Uh, so, can you? Uh, Elaborate on this because uh, I mean also in the non-supersymmetric case uh, the, the Wilson lines uh, no, are are uh, labeled by representations. So right. in what sense here uh, the classification is is refined? Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, I, I I'm going to explain. Yeah. So um, yeah. So uh, the claim is that the general uh, BPS Wilson two line operators are classified by. Uh, this lattice, uh, lambda, the character, so lambda character is, okay, this is a something called character lattice, and this is called a co-character lattice. So we take the uh, direct product and divide by the wide group. Yeah, so uh, this um, character lattice is generated, generated by the weights in all representation R of the gauge group G, and uh, an, an element of, the character lattice represents the electric charge. So basically, this can be thought of as the highest weight of the representation R. And similarly, uh, the code character lattice uh, is, well, it, it, it's the uh, set of magnetic charges and defined to be the dual lattice of the character lattice. Yeah, so basically here, uh, this is uh, uh, the answer to uh, Francesco. So let lambda mat, okay. So, so mat, some, okay. So, some lattice defined by the matter representation. And I mean, the representation uh, carried by the matter fields. So, so let lambda mat be the lattice generated by roots and weights. So roots represent the uh, okay, uh, electric charges of the gluons. And the weights uh, are the okay, the, the electric charge of the matter fields. Okay, so so let, let lambda mat be the lattice generated by root and the weight in the matter representation. Then the quotient, uh, the the character lattice divided by uh, lambda mat. Uh, well, if you if well, if you compute, if you follow that, if you look at the definition, it turns out that this is nothing but uh, uh, Pontryagin dual of the, the group gamma sub E uh, for the one form symmetry. So yeah, so, so here I, I'm dividing by lambda mat. What this means is that gluons, gluons and, and matter fields can screen the Wilson, uh, the, the Wilson loops. So, so gamma, gamma sub E V that, yeah, so, the right hand side, this is a, a rough topological classification, right? And uh, it is obtained by the uh, finer defined classification up to dynamical fields, dynamical particles, because, okay, dynamical particles can uh, screen the electric charge. And similarly, um, uh, the co character lattice uh, divided by the co lattice is. Uh, uh, the group, the, the group of charges for the magnetic one form symmetry. So does this answer uh, your question, Francesco? Maybe what I don't understand is the role of supersymmetry in the sense that this, uh, I mean, should be. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, I think I think. Um, we can still you know, consider a refined classification in non-supersymmetric gate theories, but but without supersymmetry, uh, there is not much computational control, and uh, we we cannot really we cannot convincingly see the uh, defined classification. Yeah. Okay. With that, I agree. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but in principle, I think yeah, defined classification would make sense. Uh, sorry, I have a maybe related question. Like, but yes. is it known that uh, 
the BPS line uh, operators must all be in either a Wilson line or a Tooth line. Couldn't be some line operator which doesn't fall in this class. Uh, okay. Um, well, first of all, they can be combined and they give rise to dionic line operators. Um, okay. Can there be other line operators? Um, for Lagrangian series, I, I'm yeah, I'm not aware of any other uh, line operators and. Yeah, for non-Lagrangian theories, okay, first of all, without Lagrangian, we cannot define uh, Wilson and Tooth line operators, but still we believe that there exists some line operators. And in that case, the construction, the, the, the definition would be more abstract. Yeah, that, that's all I can say. We have another question. Hmm? Sorry? So uh, I was wondering, maybe the difference between the two uh, classifications is whether we assume it to be stable or not, because I think in general monopoles can decay unless they are charged under pi one, which is what protects them from further decaying. So maybe the, uh, the point is that the BPS cannot decay and that's why you have the full uh, classification, but regular ones can decay. And that's why you end up with the, the smaller uh, classification. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, in some sense, I agree. Um, but because we are considering uh, oper operators, which are external probe charges, uh, and these are not really dynamical objects, right? So, so they cannot really decay. It's like, yeah, they cannot decay. Uh, these, these are external objects. But, but still, um, I think the screening is in some sense similar to de uh, decay. So dynamical particles attach the, the external uh, ch external charges and uh, yeah, um, the classification becomes more rough. Does this make sense? Yes, okay. Okay, okay, probably I should hurry up now. Um, okay, so, so here in this discussion, I assume that uh, there are no discrete theta angles. I mean, yeah, discrete theta angles are zero. But uh, it is known that it is known uh, from the work of Aharoni, uh, Zaibak, and Tachikawa that, uh, uh, yeah, so in gauge theories, we can introduce non trivial discrete theta angles. And, and actually, I'm not sure if uh, people have worked out the one form symmetries of the theories. And if somebody in the audience knows, um, I would appreciate it if uh, you, you could let me know. Okay, let, let me continue. So uh, now, now uh, my discussion is going, going to be more uh, specialized and technical and quantitative. So, um, so I want to consider um, the Coulomb branch uh, of the four dimensional n equals to uh, gate theory. Uh, Compactify on a circle, but with a finite size circle. So the, then the it is known that the Coulomb branch of this uh, theory is a hyper hyperketer. So essentially, this is a three dimensional n equals four uh, uh, supersymmetric theory. And uh, if the n equals two theory is a so called uh, a class S theory based on a punctured Riemann surface, then the Coulomb branch is known to be. Uh, you know, given by the Hitchin moduli space on the uh, Riemann surface. And the expectation values of the, the BPS, Wilson, and Tooth operators parameterize the Coulomb branch. And uh, uh, more precisely, I want to uh, consider a uh, uh, deformed, deformed uh, setup. Namely, I want to introduce the, this uh, omega deformation parameter, uh, the omega deformation parameter lambda. So, uh, what does this mean by this uh, product? So as we go around the, the circle S1, we rotate along the, the three axis of, R, of the R3 by angle two pi lambda. So th that's the definition of this product. And we insert uh, line operators L around uh, wrapping the circle and uh, uh, at some point on the three axis and uh, 
at the origin of the uh, one two prime. And then this definition is similar to the omega deformation uh, for the five dimensional um, yeah, instant on partial function. And um, in particular, the expectation value of the line operator uh, on this geometry can be written as the trace, uh, well, in some Hilbert space defined by the line operator. And this is in fact the same setup uh, as considered by Gayoto, Mu, and Naitsuke. Uh, uh, Naitsuke who studies the line operators with, uh, with a spe spectral network. So they were considering the infrared dynamics rather than the, the ultraviolet uh, dynamics. Um, the, the, my, the claim is that uh, the, the expectation value of the line operators so, so these guys, the expression value of the line, line operators on this geometry uh, implement the deformation quantization of the uh, Coulomb branch. Well, there are some typos. Uh, for, for class S theory, uh, by the AGT correspondence, the expectation value of the line operator is mapped to the, uh, the so-called Wigner transform, or, or no, also known as the wide ordering of the value in the operator expressed as a difference operator. Well, yeah, okay. If, if you do not know, uh, if you do not know much about the agency correspondence, okay, this, what I said probably doesn't make sense, but uh, um, let me continue. So what do I mean by deformation quantization? So, so omega deformation or omega deformation parameter lambda uh, introduces a quantization of the Coulomb branch. So, um, so the geometry is S1 times R3 with uh, omega deformation parameter, right? And uh, um, then there, there is a there, um, there is a three axis, uh, and, and for the transverse plane, we, we take consider the origin. The, the, it is known that the theory reduced it to. Um, Okay, the, the, the theory with the insertion of BPS line operators reduces to a one dimensional topological theory. So there is a one dimensional topological sector. Then only the ordering of operators matters. So, so I mean, so we can move around, we can move, move these uh, operators along the three axis and uh, the expectation values or, or the correlation functions do not depend on the precise locations of the operators, only the ordering. The, the correlation function depends only on, the, on the, the ordering of the operators. Hmm. And uh, uh, because, okay, the deformation quantization means that uh, the product becomes non commutative. And uh, this is implemented by the uh, Moyal product. Uh, what this means is that um, if you insert two operators, for example, O1 and O2, and compute the expectation value. This is given by the the Moyal the Moyal product of the individual expectation values, and the Moyal product is defined uh, by this formula. Uh, this is really appropriate. This definition is appropriate for a gauge group UN, but uh, for other gauge groups there is some generalization. Uh, okay, I did not I did not define. Okay, sorry, I'd not define A and B, but these are essentially the expectation values of the uh, scalars, two scalars in the vector multiplet, but they are also uh, complexified by the holonomies, uh, gauge holonomies along the S1 for A and also the, uh, the, mag the magnetic dual of such holonomies. Uh, I mean, the expectation value of the uh, so-called dual photon. Um, they, they enter the definition of B. Anyway, A and B are the, uh, the coordinate on the Coulomb branch. Now- um, Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, does this deformation have a counterpart in uh, via a AGT in, in uh, two dimensions? Yes. So, in the AGT correspondence, um, the variant operators 
the yeah the warranty operators are different operators and uh, they uh, in general they, they do not commute uh, with each other different different variant operators do not commute with each other and the omega deformation parameter lambda let's see uh, lambda is uh, lambda here is essentially the b squared you know b b is a uh, uh, parameter that enters the uh, dubial central charge i see okay yeah now, yeah, younger people may not be very familiar with the edges correspondence, but yeah, let me, let me continue. So uh, important ingredients in my uh, calculations, uh, uh, imp important ingredients that's also called monopole screening or monopole bubble. So what, what is this? So, so monopoles, monopoles are described by uh, the bogon morning equations, which can be written as d phi equals star f. And the star is uh, the three-dimensional hood duo. Yeah, uh, so usually solutions to these equations are the smooth monopoles, uh, putting off two monopoles. But uh, when discussing uh, two line operators, uh, we are interested in a situation where there is a direct monopole singularity. And the strength of the uh, singularity is uh, specified, okay, some element of the uh, uh, realgebra or the element of the Cartan subalgebra, sub uh, it's B. And the smooth monopoles actually can attach the singular monopole and the screen, screen and reduce the direct singularity. So here, the singularity becomes weaker. So this this is the, this is a, uh, intuitive picture of monopole screening or bubbling. Um, this, is, this is similar to uh, the small instanton singularity uh, in the case of instanton counting. Um, and it, it is known that um, in instanton counting, uh, non-trivial contributions come from uh, the so-called torus fixed points, uh, yeah, where, where some, uh, there are some singularities. And similarly, uh, for the computation of total operator expectation values, uh, um, there are non perturbative non trivial contributions from torus fixed points. Okay, so to, okay, to, torus means here some uh, group actions in the localization calculation. And uh, uh, there are some, yeah, um, non, yeah, non non perturbative contribution come from yeah, such fixed points which uh, appear in the uh, singular both side of the monopole moduli space. Yeah. Okay, so these are okay, somewhat technical uh, points. Anyway, um, uh, the end result is that the expectation value can be written as the sum over several points here. So there are some uh, perturbative one loop contribution and there are some uh, non perturbative uh, contributions which I uh, call uh, Z mon. So, so here uh, the, the sum is of uh, uh, magnetic charge B. So B minus B minus some cold. So the, uh, little v, v, little v is a magnetic charge reduced by uh, screen. So, so in some sense, this is, uh, in, in some sense, the topological classification is relevant here because here the, the subtle points carry the same topological charge under the uh, magnetic one form symmetry. So, so in, in, in this summation, only the magnetic charges, the, the refined magnetic charges corresponding to the same uh, topological charge uh, appear here. Yeah, anyway, so, so this, this is a schematic form of the uh, total line uh, expectation value. Okay. And uh, okay, this is an example of the uh, result of the localization calculation. So here, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the gauge group is U2 
And, and assuming that there are uh, the so-called hyper multiplet in the uh, fundamental representation. Okay, and, and there are okay, four uh, such hyper multiplets. And the uh, uh, magnetic charge for the total -to operator is assumed to be, okay, the diagonal uh, two by two matrix, one minus one. Yeah, so, so uh, this is the uh, result of the calculation. Yeah, so, so, so there are, by, by now there are several techniques for you know, doing this calculation, but uh, one, this is, this is the result of the calculation for this example. Um, yeah, so, so actually, so I did, I did this calculation Let's see, uh, basically 10 years ago. But uh, um, in 2018, um, so uh, like three, three, three years ago, um, Brennan, Day, and Moore uh, came up with a new approach for calculating the bubbling contribution, Z mono, Z mono here. Let's see. Um, Okay, let me skip. Uh, yeah, so basically, the, the, uh, the, the new method uses, uh, uses uh, a supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And they identified the monopole bubbling contribution as the, the partition function or the width index of the uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And I'm going to give some explanation of the uh, supersymmetric supersymmetric quantum mechanical uh, method, but uh, uh, my story will be a little different from uh, that of Brennan, Day, and Moore, so, because uh, they were considering uh, gauge group SUN, but uh, in my talk, actually in, in my work, I consider uh, gauge group to be either UN or S SO or USP. And, uh, uh, yeah, the relation between the supersymmetric quantum mechanics and, and the wall crossing uh, is simpler uh, for UN and SOUSP. So even for SUN, uh, Brennan, Day, and Moore uh, discussed the wall crossing phenomena, but uh, the story is more, more complicated and that more subtle. So uh, I skip that. And uh, here I uh, consider gauge group UN and later um, SO and USB. So uh, again, uh, let me con as, as an example, let me consider uh, the supersymmetric super symmetric QCD. Yeah, SQCD means supersymmetric QCD, uh, quantum chromodynamics. And, uh, and this means that the matter hyper multiplet is in the fundamental representation of the gauge group. And in order to uh, explain the uh, quantum mechanics, it's useful to consider the brain construction of uh, two root operators. So, 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 so uh, now uh, the story is getting more technical and uh, I'm assuming some knowledge of, uh, of uh, super string theory. So, so now I'm considering uh, type 2B uh, super string theory and uh, uh, okay. So um, I'm assuming that the uh, gate theory is realized on the uh, world volume of two D D3 brains. In order to introduce fundamental hypermarket, I'm considering some uh, D7, D7 brains. And actually uh, I'm following, I'm following um, Brennan, Day and Moore, and I'm assuming that there is some uh, non-trivial supergravity background such which gives, gives a large mass to the uh, adjoint hypermarket plate that lives on the D3 range. So, so uh, I'm assuming that the adjoint hypermarket plate is decoupled. Then uh, this, set, this setup realizes the uh, uh, supersymmetric QCD uh, for, with gauge group SU, with gauge group U, U2. Hmm. Then, um, as many people know, uh, magnetic charges can be introduced using uh, D1, D1 brains. So I'm considering uh, D1 brains here and here. Uh, and also here. Uh, now these are finite D, D, D1 brains, are the usual uh, story. So, so uh, finite D1 brains or D strings represent uh, smooth finite mass monopoles. 
but uh, uh, code operators correspond to infinite mass uh, monopoles, and they can be realized using uh, D1 brains uh, ending on NS5 brains. And uh, by considering uh, NS5 brains on the right or on the, on the left of the stack of uh, D3 brains, we can uh, introduce magnetic charges corresponding to the fundamental representation or the anti-fundamental representation of the uh, Langland duo of the gauge group U2, which is again U2. So it, it's rather complicated if you are not familiar with uh, mm -hmm. Um, uh, um, total operators, but uh, anyway, the magnetic charge now is uh, uh, the diagonal matrix minus one one, and it corresponds to the product of uh, two more basic uh, total operators, uh, to T, which I you know T box and T anti box, so so yeah, fundamental and anti fundamental. But I write this seems similar symbol because okay, there are some subtlety in this identification. And also uh, here I'm considering uh, D3 brains, okay, D1, D3, and D7 brains, but uh, uh, later it will be useful to uh, trivialize to type 2A and consider D2, D4, D6. Anyway, yeah, I'll mention this later. So, so if you want to know the explicit uh, brain configuration. This is the table for the directions, for the orientations of the brains. Now, um, so, so here uh, we have uh, the uh, talked operator and also some uh, smooth monopole that screen the charges. And when the, when the three D1 brains are aligned like this, then uh, we have a single D1 brains. We have a single D1 brain stretched between the two NS5 brains. And in this uh, configuration, uh, the, we can, uh, we, we know the, what the world volume theory is on the, uh, on the D1 brain. And it is given by the, this uh, one dimensional uh, supersymmetric quantum, quantum mechanics represented by uh, this uh, quiver. So here, okay, the, the circle is the gauge group, the, the square is the, the global, the flavor symmetry group, and uh, okay, the, the solid line is, uh, um, the solid line is a uh, hypermultiple, the dotted line is uh, uh, the so-called uh, short film multiple. Anyway, um, th th there is a technique, uh, uh, to compute, there is a technique technique for computing the uh, partition function or the uh, Witte index for the supersymmetric quantum me mechanics. Uh, this uses the so-called uh, Jeffrey Curran uh, residue prescri prescription. Yeah, for uh, supersymmetric quantum me mechanics, uh, this technique was uh, introduced by okay Wang Kim Kim Park, Kurt Vashao, Hori Kim Yi, but. Uh, uh, oh, uh, originally, so so earlier than uh, the one dimensional case, um, the Jeffrey Kawa method was applied to the diptych genus for two dimensional supersymmetric theories. And okay, this was introduced by okay, Francesco and uh, his, his collaborators. So here, here I'm uh, using the method for uh, uh, one dimensional uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Now, um, yes, yeah, so. Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I didn't understand. How is the quantum mechanics coupled to the bulk? The quantum mechanics that lives on the line operator. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, um, so, uh, so the bulk gate theory, the fourth dimensional gate theory has some parameters, for example, the uh, Coulomb, uh, uh, the, the, scale, scale, the scalar expectation values, which parameterize the uh, Coulomb branch, the fourth dimensional Coulomb branch, right? And uh, these parameters appear as um, flavor fugacities or 
if you like uh, mass, mass parameters. Yeah, so, so the, the, the four-dimensional gauge symmetry is the uh, flavor symmetry for the uh, quantum mechanics. Then when computing the, when computing the partition function or the Witten index for the quantum mechanics, we are supposed to do uh, integration over the, over the scalars in the one-dimensional gauge multiplet. So we need to integrate, we need to uh, evaluate the uh, quantum integrals over the, uh, the one-dimensional uh, scalars in the vector, in the gauge multiplet. But the, the Jeffrey Kawa method allows us to compute the, the quantum integral using well, well, as, a, as a sum over the uh, Jeffrey Kawa residues. Does this answer your question, Francesco? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so, um, now, so now we are considering uh, quantum mechanics and in principle, uh, uh, quantum mechanics can uh, exhibit world crossing phenomena. So what, what do I mean by world crossing? So um, supersymmetric quantum mechanics, uh, when there are U1 factors in the gauge group, uh, 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 supersymmetric quantum, supersymmetric quantum mechanics have uh, Fi parameters, Fi at Iliopoulos uh, parameters. And the uh, partition function can depend on the value of the uh, the value of the Fi parameter. So, uh, so, so the, the, the partition function is piecewise constant in the space of Fi parameters, but on some walls in the space of Fi parameter, there can be a jump in the value of the partition function. And in the brain configuration, in, in, the, in the brain construction, um, the FI parameters are related to the, the locations of the NS5 brains. And the location of the, of the NS5 brain is nothing but the, the location of, of the toft operators. So uh, it's natural to expect that world crossing in uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics is related to the, the choice of the ordering of the toft operators. And then and, uh, the simplest case where this can be checked is the following. Actually, uh, before our work, uh, this example was considered by uh, Arcel and Cromonesi, uh, 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 yeah, independently. So, uh, so, so what, what's the story? So, um, wait, Arcel Cromonesi and also Sierra Pai. Uh, no, sorry, Aster and, Aster and Sierra Pai. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, okay, Aster and Sierra Pai. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so in the case of, uh, yeah, in, in the case I, I discussed, uh, there are two different configurations uh, on the left and on the right. And the, if you compute the expectation value of the total operator, actually the, the product total operator, then the, the, the results are different when yeah, the number of flavor is four. So that's, that, that, this is an example of work costing. And uh, if you consider the product of three operators, uh, the chamber structure for work crossing uh, in the space of FY parameter is more complicated. Now, um, uh, Naively, there can there are six chambers, but there are six chambers uh, corresponding to three uh, operators. But there is no non-trivial wall crossing on the uh, on the, the dashed on the dashed line because here, for example, the the two chambers are related by the exchange of uh, three and two, but three and two are the same operator, so there are no discrete changes here. Um, this computation can be uh, generalized to uh, okay, higher magnetic charges. Higher magnetic charges are given by uh, 
uh, D1, okay, uh, multiple D1 brains ending on a single NS5 brain for, for UN gauge group. Uh, okay, we also generalized the brain construction and uh, uh, localization calculations and, and supersymmetric quantum mechanics to SO and the USP gauge theories. And this involves the introduction of uh, orient folds. There are okay, several different types of orient fold and okay, they can be used to uh, construct SO USP uh, gauge theories. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so far I've been discussing four dimensional gauge theories, but uh, they, they can be generalized to three, at least three and five dimensions. For three dimensions, uh, I wrote a paper with Yoshida and also there's an in, uh, independent work by Arthur Kermonese and Renvik. Uh, the papers were submitted to the archive uh, simultaneously. And uh, okay, the computations using uh, matrix model instead of uh, quantum mechanics, uh, they basically reproduce the result by uh, Okay, by, 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 so by earlier works. So, um, okay, I'm very sorry. Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, this uh, reproduce the, the result of earlier works. Okay, very more demoft and Kayot. Yeah, okay. Now, now the, the, for five majors, uh, so Yutaka Yoshida wrote uh, a single author paper. Um, I think uh, this, um, this is the uh, first paper which uh, studies the tool to surface operators in five dimensions uh, in detail. So, so she considered n equals one star uh, UN theory and compute the, the expectation values of uh, uh, tool to surface operators and uh, show that they are, they, give, they are related to um, what he calls type A elliptic with null uh, operators, some, some difference operators. Okay, let me uh, summarize. Uh, okay, we saw two strong operators that meet the topological classification by one form symmetries. Okay, PPS operators uh, more naturally uh, classify uh, in a more refined way using okay, uh, character and co character lattices. The PPS line operators on S1 times R3 with omega deformation are natural observable. The expectation values can be computed by supersymmetric localization and no part of its contributions. To, uh, to the operators can be computed by supersymmetric quantum mechanics. And, and uh, we, did this we did this calculation for gauge group UN, SON, and USPN. Wall crossing can occur when the order of two operators changes. Okay, that's a summary. And for future directions, okay, I, I would like to compute the, the total, total operator expectation values for other gauge groups and uh, other matter representations. And actually, uh, um, uh, more total operators are uh, intimately related to instant on counting, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, instant on counting also uh, uh, shows word crossing phenomena. Then a natural question is how much of this uh, word crossing instant on counting can be understood using supersymmetric quantum mechanics? Um, there's some work. Uh, by uh, Wang, Kim, Kim, and Park, uh, who studied uh, quantum me mechanics to, uh, to yeah, who, who used supersymmetric quantum mechanics to study world crossing instant counting. But uh, yeah, it, well, it, it's a natural question is to understand the, the, the relation of their work uh, with other uh, works, in, in particular. Okay, some work was so work, work crossing result by Okawa. And yeah, so, so this is uh, this is a work in progress with uh, Hayashi and Yoshida. Okay, this is all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have uh, questions? Yes. Um, I was wondering, can you compute these two lines for uh, n equals four and check uh, 
like electric magnetic duality, like that you get the same as the Wilson lines for some dual gauge group? Yes. So, uh, so n equals four uh, can be uh, deformed to uh, n equals two supersymmetric theories, and that's called n equals two star, n equals two star theories. Yeah. So, so in this talk, I focused on uh, supersymmetric QCD, but uh, in our papers, uh, we actually uh, computed uh, the expectation values of uh, total operators in n equals two star theories, so which are deformations of n equals four. So, um, by taking the mass to be zero, uh, we, we get um, n equals four results. Yes, indeed. And uh, especially for, uh, especially in the n equals four limit, um, the expectation value of total operators are essentially the characters or the, the what, what, what is called? The, the, yeah, the, the character. So, so the, the basically the, the Wilson line expectation values. So, so, Indeed, we can uh, explicitly check SGRT. Thanks. Other questions? I actually have a question. Um, yeah. So uh, if I understand correctly, so the, the wall crossing happens as you move in the Coulomb branch. And- uh, uh, no, not, not in this case, no. Also, can so, you clarify? Well, yeah, so that's different from world crossing of uh, Gayatomu and Naitsuki. So Gayatomu and Naitsuki, they were actually uh, varying all possible parameters, I think. So yeah, they, they were considering the variation of uh, Kuron branch parameters and also mass parameters. And uh, they exhibit world crossing. But, uh, the world crossing phenomena I discussed in my talk are different from the world crossing phenomena uh, discussed by Gadmu and Naitsky. Yeah, so 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 in their story, world crossing appears because uh, yeah, I guess some BPS particles become non BPS and decay. Um, in my story. In in our work, uh, world crossing uh, occur. So the, the interpretation is different. So yeah, one interpretation is that yeah, world crossing occurs because the the, the ordering of the operators changes. One interpretation. Um, I expect that there would be um, an interpretation in terms of uh, d brains in, um, in in super string theory. So in, in brain construction, but that, that's something to be worked out. I see. Okay, thank you. So yes, I think there are no other questions. So let's thank uh, Takuya again. Okay, thank you.